All right. Today, I'm gonna show you how to adjust and check the valve clearance on a Honda PCX. My bike is a 2011 PCX 125 United States spec, but this job should be the same for pretty much every year of PCX. Definitely up until I think 2015 should be exactly the same. I think in 15 or 16 they changed them, but should be basically the same. Um, the tools you're gonna need, You're gonna need a set of sockets and wrenches, um, probably eight millimeter to 17 or maybe 19 millimeter. I'm not sure exactly, but just basically a, a set of sockets um, and wrenches. You're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver. You're gonna need a set of feeler gauges um, to set the valve clearance um if you want to know i'll tell you right off the bat what the valve clearance is it is written on the bike um go ahead and open the seat thing and it on this little sticker it is written right here and it says valve lash intake it's given in millimeters so 0.1 millimeter for intake 0.24 millimeter exhaust cold right i converted this to, to inches, this is four thou and nine thou in inches. My filler gauges are in inches, so that's what it is. And it's cold, so um, you should let your bike sit ideally like overnight, but to be real with you, three, four hours probably if you want to get an exact reading for the, you know, for the clearance. Um, so that's the feeler gauges you're gonna need. A uh, lot of misinformation online on this. So that's why I'm making the video. People take the whole bike apart to do this job. And I'm gonna be real with you. You do have to take apart quite a lot, but I'm just gonna do like, not the bare minimum, but basically what you need to take apart to do it, you know, well and do it relatively as easy as possible, right? So, um, and also, how often should you do this? Uh, this bike, you can see it's pretty well beat on. This bike I bought with 27,500 miles on it. That was the first time the valve cover had ever been off. 27,000 miles, the valves were almost exactly in spec. Intake was exactly in spec. Exhaust was a little on the tight side, but still basically okay. So they say change, check the valves every 4,000 miles. I think that's overkill. If I had a new PCX, I'd change it in 1,000 miles, or check them in 1,000 miles, and then I'd probably check them every 10,000 after that. The only reason, I, my bike has 30,000 on it now, the only reason I'm going back in here is because my valve cover is leaking a little bit of oil, so I'm gonna go in there and reseal it with some RTV silicone. Um, I don't think the valves are gonna be out of spec, but I've done this job before, so I'm gonna show you, in my opinion, the best way of doing it. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to remove the seat and storage area in order to do that we're going to have to remove this piece here we're going to have to remove the battery tray holder thing and probably this guy here we're going to need to remove this cover here that should be it on the videos people are removing this whole thing they're removing the, this whole big piece that holds the tail light they're removing the radiator and the and the little radiator cover here, playing with the flywheel, don't need to do that. You can, but you don't need to do that, right? So I'm gonna show you basically just the basic way of doing it. So we can get started here. Open the seat thing. Gonna need to take this seat cover area out. So there's two eight mils here. So we're, I'm gonna remove those eight mils and then I'm going to use like a screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver and pry this off. Now my bike has been way beat by the florida sun i don't think it i think it let stayed outside basically the whole first 10 or 11 years of its life so plastics are very brittle and cracked on my bike and they're already cracked here i've fixed that with some um, some jb weld on the underside so be careful don't break your plastic so i'm gonna take loose that and then i'm gonna show you how to take loose the seat thing so let me just set the camera up you can fast forward through this or whatever if you want so Eight mil. I 
try it by hand. Get the fit on before. If it feels like it's gonna break, you're probably doing it right. <laughs> cool. So now we gotta take loose this metal part here, which is, I don't know what you call it, grab rail or something. It's held in with four 12 mil head bolts. There, 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 and there. Go ahead and remove that. And that will allow us to remove the seat storage area thing. One of my bolts is 10 mil. It's not the original bolt. I'm gonna do a quick socket change. Now, we can remove the seat and the storage area all in one go. You don't have to remove the seat from the storage area like everyone likes to do. Now, you can see here, right? There's not a lot of clearance there, but you can, if you're careful, you can, once you loosen the bolts off for the storage area, which these two, which we just removed, right? And then it should be 10 mil, four 10 mils here. Uh, these are Phillips head screws. That's not original. It would be 10 mil head. So those four, and then these two, which we just removed, and we'll be able to lift the seat panel storage area thing off. Um, in a perfect world, you'd remove this whole whole thing, but you don't need to. There's enough give in this that we can slide this back and out without messing with this, right? So I'll go ahead and remove these bolts here and then slide the whole seat thing out. Break this? Dang it. Well, I broke the tripod. <laughs> or the wind broke the tripod. All right, no big deal, we'll continue. Yeah, so the four 10 mils here, then we'll lift the seat panel off. I'll show you lifting the seat panel off in a second. All right, now I can remove the storage area here. There's a few bolts I forgot about. There's two right here, 10 mil head, that hold the battery box to the seat storage area. Then there's two Phillips head screws that hold these red side covers to the storage area. But if you're careful and you slide these out of the way, you get this whole seat or any of that. I also should have said um, your bike would have a, a cover here covering the battery. Um, my bike has the wrong battery in it so I can't run with that cover but that's just held in with one Phillips head screw. So now look there's the engine. That wasn't that hard was it? Didn't have to take the whole dang bike apart to get to it. So we need to get access to the valves which are under here. This is the head cover or valve cover. 
Now, how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna take loose this breather hose here. We're gonna take loose this 10 millimeter that holds this fuel line to it. You don't have to disconnect the fuel line, just disconnect the hose. And then there's three bolts that hold the valve cover on. There's one here. There is one down here, which we're gonna access that from underneath. And there's another one underneath on the other the other corner to this one, which we're gonna get from underneath. But we're gonna get when we're up top. Right now, we're gonna re just remove this, this. And this. All right, so I removed the breather hose from here. I removed this 10 mil that holds that fuel hose. And I removed the 10 mil that holds the valve cover from here. Now we're gonna get to the tricky bolts that hold the valve cover on. So you come under here. Now, my bike's missing these, this side cover here. It always has been. So probably you'd have to remove that if you have a stock bike, I'm not sure exactly how you're moving. I'm guessing it's just, it's held in to this piece with probably 10 mils or Phillips heads. You could also remove the spark plug access thing to make it easier, but you have to get down here. I don't know how good you can see it. This bolt right here. I don't know if the camera's focusing on it too good. This bolt. I'm gonna remove my spark plug lead it's getting in the way and i have a little bit of aftermarket one kind of bigger but the only way you're getting that is with a 10 mil wrench so i'm gonna go ahead with my spark plug lead remove this bolt and then come over to the other side underneath the bike get down here and get the last 10 mil see it better where I'm pointing at that right there is the last 10 mil you need to remove and then we can remove the valve cover itself I'm gonna get that with a 10 mil wrench from over underneath on this side all right I got my three 10 mil head valve cover bolts removed they are all the same now we're ready to remove the valve cover. Uh, this is gonna be hard one-handed, but whatever, let's go for it. It's probably gonna be stuck on there <laughs> if your bike hasn't had a valve cover removed in a while. On my bike, it's only been 3,000 miles, so it's coming off easy. And I'm gonna go ahead. I guess I'm gonna remove it through the bottom. Yeah. It's gonna take two hands, but I'm gonna remove it through the bottom just to make it easier on myself. All right, I was wrong. So basically, if you don't want to remove this battery box, it, it won't come out through the bottom, the gas tank's in the way. If you don't want to remove this battery box, what you gotta do, take loose the injector, which is held on with two 10 mil head bolts, which are here and here, take loose this fuel line, you have to. That's the only way you're gonna do it, right? The way you take loose the fuel line is you squeeze in these two little tabs on the side, and then you pull up on this green thing and then you slide it off this piece and then you can move the injector out of the way. So we have the valve cover off now. This gasket will probably be stuck on to yours. Um, you can choose to just leave it there. Like I said, the reason I'm actually doing this job is because mine is leaking. That's not, I'm checking the valves anyway, but my valve cover is leaking a little bit. So I'm gonna pull that gasket off um, and I'm gonna seal it all back up with RTV, which I'll show you in a little bit, but for right now, we'll check the valves. So how do we check the valves? With the feeler gauges, but we have to get the engine on top dead center compression. How do we do that? We have to turn the engine by hand. To do that, we're gonna remove this so we can get access to the crankshaft. Three eight mil head bolts. All right, so once you've removed these three, 8 mil, you can turn the engine by hand to get it at top dead center, which is where neither valve is being actuated by the cam. And that's where you check the valve clearance at. Now this is 22 mil or seven eighths. 
you want to turn it counterclockwise. Um, in a perfect world, you remove the radiator and the radiator cover and you line up the mark on the flywheel, the top dead center mark on the flywheel to the case. That way you'll know you're at top dead center um, and you won't go wrong. Now, I'm not gonna bother doing that. It's too much work. What you can do, if you have an expert knowledge <laughs> of four stroke engines, is you just watch. You turn the engine and you watch the valves, right? You have the intake valve here intake valve rocker and the exhaust rocker down there. I don't know how good you're gonna see or if this is gonna focus good. So you wanna turn it counterclockwise and watch what's going on. So you can see she's rocking the exhaust valve there. See that? So she's gonna rock the exhaust valve, keep turning it. Then the intake valve. And when it, just when it's done rocking the intake valve, you'll feel on the crankshaft that it will get at its hardest point to turn. This is when the piston is coming up on top dead center, right there. Neither valve is being actuated. The piston is at the top. And basically you just have to know from experience where it's at. If, if you don't have experience doing it or whatever, then yeah, line up the mark on the on the flywheel, but I'm not gonna bother doing that. So then we can check the valves. Now intake was four thou of an inch for 0.1 millimeter. This is the regular gauge. Come in under here. Let's go right here with it and it should be a little bit of drag on it. Just a little bit of drag. It is not rocket science, like it said on the little um, sticker under the seat, plus or minus 0 0.02 mil. So as long as it's pretty close, I wouldn't mess with it. Like I said, I just adjusted these about 3000 miles ago. That is fine right there. Now, if your valves are out of spec, the way you adjust them, take loose this, which I believe is nine millimeters nut. That's like a lock nut. And then you can turn this little square guy here, right? And that's how you actually adjust the valve lash. So you wanna take loose that Turn this until you got a nice little bit of drag on your feeler gauge. And then, you know, hold that with a needle nose pliers and tighten down the lock nut. That's how you want to do it. Good and snug. And then you can repeat it with the exhaust valve on the underside. I'll get down here and show you. Oh man, oh man. I don't know how good you guys are even gonna see it. Remember the spec that I gave earlier? Nine thou. Sorry for all you metric guys. Always, I'm all, always have done this in inches. So nine thou is the spec on that. I'll go ahead and check that the same way. You adjust it the same way. Yeah. These both feel good. But I'll go ahead and check that again. And then we'll go onto putting this bike back together. All right, so I just finished checking the exhaust valve. It was a little on the loose side. Um, nine thou was the spec. It was about 11 or 12 thou. Um, so I just 
it's too it's basically impossible to show you but i'll basically just demonstrate with this so i just you know like i said loosen off the lock nut put the feeler gauge in there turn this little square on top until you got a little bit of drag on your feeler gauge and then find some way you know those pliers or something to hold this square in place and use a nine millimeter to nine millimeter wrench to lock down the lock nut now what you also want to do is um once you've done you know, if you actually did adjust your valves what you want to do is turn the engine maybe three or four times by hand counterclockwise and check them again um so i'm going to go ahead and do that and then that way you know you didn't you didn't screw up because you know you, it may be you thought you had it on top dead center but you didn't or something like that so just rotate it a few times check your clearance again make sure you're right and then we can go back go back to reassembly so I'm gonna do that, rotate a little bit, and then I'm gonna put this cover back on with the three eight mil head bolts, and then we'll do the valve cover. All right, so I've pulled off the valve cover gasket, head cover gasket. Um, I'll put the part number to it in the description there. You might wanna get a new one. Um, I'm cheap, so I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna. All right, so here's the valve cover. Got my brake cleaner. Got my toothbrush and it's hard to do with one hand, but I'm basically just gonna go all around here, scrub this out good. It's actually in really nice condition for 30,000 miles. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Same thing with the old valve cover gasket itself. And then I'm going to take some RTV silicone, put it on the gasket and set the gasket in there. All right, so I put my gasket back on, covered it with this black RTV, you can use black RTV, gray or red, it's all the same. Um, you probably, if you have a, if your valve cover gasket's in good condition or you have a new one, you don't need to do this step. I'm cheap, so I'm using my 30,000 mile <laughs> valve cover gasket. Um, the old one, just putting RTV on it. That'll be fine, that'll work, you know what I mean? But in a perfect world, you would get a new gasket and just replace it, you know? But um, the only way you can go wrong with the RTV is using too much this is too much like i said probably but uh whatever a little bit will spooge into the engine doesn't hurt nothing but the only way you can really go wrong is uh this is like a little hole for the breather make sure you don't plug that hole up with the sealant because then the, the crankcase won't vent good it vents out of this this tube here you can get this anywhere any hardware store walmart harbor freight tools or whatever so now we're going to put it back on the bike, which I'm going to do this with two hands, but um, that sealant is going to, I put it on both sides of the gasket, so that's going to hold it in place, make it easier for me to reinstall, but I'm just going to go back in with that, put it on my head, which is nice and clean, and then I'm going to retighten the three bolts. All right, valve cover's back on. Now we can go put the bike back together. So we'll put the injector back in, make sure the O-ring is in good condition. Two 10 mil bolts hold that on. This fuel hose, which just pushes on to this, to the guy on the injector right here. And then you push the green guy down. The little 10 mil that goes here that holds the fuel line and the hose that goes right here. So I'll reconnect all of them. All right, valve cover's back on, injector's back in, injector line, this little guy here that holds the injector line, this breather hose, spark plug lead, and that's everything from down here that's back on. So now we are ready to put the seat pa the pan storage area thing back on. This is probably going to be the hardest part being that I still have these covers here, you know, on, so... I'm going to set the phone on there and show you as best I can putting it back on. But basically, we're just going to slide it in, come through this way, slide it forwards, and line it up with this battery thing, which is loose. And then I'll show you all the screws and bolts and stuff to put it back. Uh, I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. So I've, the seat pan thing's back in. Um, yeah, so you just basically slide it in like this, reverse of what I showed you earlier. First, you want to line up the battery, little battery box thing, sort of slots in, and then you can pull these back, 
slotted in there and it sort of sits on these little i don't know what you call it little bosses here and here and that's how you feel it like slot into place so uh 10 mil head bolts here 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 the longer ones and then the little short guys here there and there that hold the battery the battery box to this and then uh phillips head screw here and here and another one there and we'll be able to slide those panels back on and then we'll put this metal piece on and the plastic piece that goes over it next all right all the fasteners are back in for this this area those this one this one and the one under there sick so now we'll put this guy back on this is super easy held in with these m8 bolts 12 mil head bolts there 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 and there all right and last we'll put this plastic piece back on which has three little snap guys so we'll sort of situate it in place and then you can push down on it feel the three things snap into place and then the two eight mil head bolts here and here all right so that's it that's the end of the hardest valve adjustment of all time pretty much so uh yeah hope to help you guys out uh, basically that's how you know the best way i can show how to do it the only part i did that was a little half baked was uh, i didn't take the radiator off and line up the flywheel to know it's on top dead center but if you're a pro level OG like me you can just look at the valves and know where top dead center is and you know have no problems doing that um, yeah so hope to help you guys out let me know in the comments if you want to see any more pcx videos or anything like that love my pcx my daily rider bike get great gas mileage it never breaks down Thirty thousand miles and it never ever has any issues and you know it's old and yeah, but excellent motorcycle. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.